so I'm completely amazed to see so many people here. It's an amazing turnout. I was really don't mean to sound too surprised, because obviously we knew we'd do a great performance and everything, but it's great to see you made it. So I've got the pleasure of standing up here and introducing this year's CAA UK chapter meeting, which is being hosted by LP Archaeology at the Truman Brewery here in the east end of London. And I must say, I'm feeling a little bit guilty about waltzing in here, issuing a few tweets, and then standing up to take all the public credit for this conference. Um, and so, really, what I'm going to do is introduce to you the people that organised the conference who really did the hard work. And the principal organisers are, in strict alphabetical order of surname, Stuart Eve, who you've already seen, Kelly Madigan, who you've probably seen wearing a high vis, and Jess Ogden, who's over there on the stairs. And they've basically put in so much of their own time on this, as well as loads of LP work time, um, to, to organise this conference, and we should give them a big thanks. Um, I'm really proud of what they've done, and uh, uh, yeah, thank you. There's another word of thanks quickly to all the other people who've been doing running around carrying chairs and stuff. Well, it's Cornelius, John, Mikey B, and Meredith. So thanks to you all. Um, if you're new to CAA, I don't know how many people are new or not, I've played a quick picture of what CAA is about. Um, CAA, and especially the national meetings, are obviously about computers, quantitative methods, and archaeology, and that's obvious from the title. Uh, but what makes CAA a really good conference, a different conference really, is the sense of community that you have here. Um, these meetings are this really great chance for people to come forward and present their work. And it's done in a really open and informal way. And it's always a really friendly audience. So I just say to the speakers and everyone, feel relaxed. It's a friendly audience. Don't worry about it too much. As well as that, the other thing about CAA is it's always been really open to kind of cross-disciplinary stuff. So there's people that are here from outside of archaeology as well as um, from within archaeology. So that's so much for CAA. As for our part here at LP, we're a kind of small commercial archaeological unit. And this is the first time that CAA, any of the CAA meetings have been organised by a commercial unit. So I just wanted to say a few sort of words about us and why we did it and so on. Um, what I mean by a contracting unit is that the majority of our work is, revolves around planning-led archaeological work. So what that means is commercial field work, contracting, consulting, what would be called CRM in the US. So we spend a lot of our time basically writing about and digging up these faceless bits of the UK which are going to end up being concreted over. Um, we're also a really small unit and if you were if you are being kind about us, you would call us a boutique. Uh, if, you were being, if you were feeling like an estate agent, you would call us bijou. <laughs> if archaeology were a high street, we would be your local deli. <laughs> there is no danger of mistaking us for Tesco. <laughs> we all know there's a commercial unit, a contracting unit, so, so why, um, why would we sign up to organise a not-for-profit event like, like CAA UK? And the short answer to the question is because we wanted to. Uh, or more specifically because Jess, Stu and Kelly said they wanted to. Uh, but the, but the, the real answer goes a bit deeper than that. And I think it's fair to say that as a unit we try to go beyond the minimum level, beyond the lowest common denominator type of archaeological work. And that seems to be such a sort of typical hallmark of modern commercial archaeology. We want to try and do stuff that goes beyond that, that work that really matters, and we also want to be able to talk about that to a wide variety of audiences. The second thing really is that we wanted to do the conference because we thought we could do something different with it. Um, we thought that our position is kind of unique, in that we can try to bring something, not just bringing you into a bar or sitting you on a sofa, but more philosophically than that. We wanted to try to bring what CAA has to offer, all the great stuff that it has to offer to a wider audience within archaeology. We wanted to try and engage with those people who are outside of the normal computing community and try to work on how problems posed in the field can be addressed through computer applications. 
So thinking a bit about the field, everything we do at LP is really driven from the field. Field work is basically what pays our bills, but it also provides us with the materials, the means and the resources to do archaeology. And on a philosophical level, the field is where we think everything we do begins. As obviously, just to be clear, I'm defining the field quite broadly there, in the sense of not just digging, but also the desk bakes work that leads from it, defines where that leads from it, analytical work and so on. But we see all of those processes as being part of what I mean by field work driven archaeology. And so an important part of our role at LP is basically how we use our position to engage between academic communities and fieldwork communities. And we would like to try to bring ideas from conferences like CAA or other conferences like TAG and try to apply them in the field. And that's really now where this first session is going. Um, in the, what we wanted to do is try to address how questions and challenges which are posed in the field can be addressed by computer applications. And so with that, I would like to introduce our first speaker, who is Otto Rayala, who's going to be talking to you about analysing and visualising the Ceramicine of Bremen Netby.